So Clive has gotten a bit of a lead on his wild goose chase here, and we've got to go and speak to the villagers that we freed to try to get a little bit of information out of them. I don't know why these people seem like they feel like they're so safe right now. What's to stop um, the bad guys from coming back? But, you know, here we are. That a hanged man, I see. Master Quentin must think you're important. It was a good thing you done today, getting rid of those bastards. If you hadn't come when you did, I'd be on my way to Ash by now, along with the others. Poor buggers. These others, was there a dominant among them? A dominant of fire? Might have been, yeah. Royalists seem to think there was, anyhow. A thin bloke all swallowed up in his robes like one of great Grieger's churchmen. Do you recall anything else about him? Hmm. Only that he weren't alone. Was a young maid who went wherever he did. Including the church. And wherever the royalists dragged them both off to before you got here. I see. Thank you. It does seem, it does seem pretty obvious that the person that Clive is chasing after isn't the dominant of Ifrit, but um, the dominant of Phoenix, meaning where he's chasing after Joshua, thinking he's someone else. But, you know, we're not at that point in the story yet. I, I guess I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Ah. Oh. Master Quinton took a lark into you, I see. And there I was, thinking you were in bed with Sid. Wonder what Gav will have to say about this. Speaking of whom, if you see him, tell him thanks for looking after us. Now, what can I help you with? I'm searching for a dominant of fire. Gav seems to think he might have taken refuge here. We see a lot bearers around these parts. But I do seem to recall one who commanded the flame. Now, whether or not that makes him a dominant, I can't say. But the Waludas certainly took a keen interest in the poor sod. Did you go look at him? Didn't have a chance. One of the other bearers might have, though. Thank you. I wonder if Sid's found anything. You'd think encountering dominance was a rare enough occurrence that people would take a little bit more of a note if they did. But, I don't know. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the way that this world works. Tell me that scowl means you've got good news. So, a shady lad with a hood and his equally shady lass. Not much to go on, but... But... I've been thinking, if our friend is a dominant, why not just burn the royalists to a crisp? There's a reason he's holding back, and I reckon he has something to do with his partner. What makes you say that? One of the villagers I talked to said the two were separated. If the Waludas have her, our dominants like to think twice before starting any fires. Whoever he is, he's shown himself to have a level head. He's careful, cunning, and he doesn't want to be found. This could spell trouble. For us and the Royalists both. <sighs> Still, it'll be a whole lot worse if we set off after them with bleary eyes and empty bellies. There should be a pair of pallets waiting for us back at the inn. Shall we? That's an interesting deduction that Sid made there. That there are two people and they were separated, so he figures out there's a possibility that, oh, well, the reason for the separation is to keep the control of the dominant. Now, about those beds. Beds? I seem to recall your request being to spend the night. And for that, the floor will more than suffice. Better than a wet rock, I suppose. <sighs> My thanks, Quentin. Next time you're at the hideaway, our floor's all yours. No need for thanks, Sid. This isn't an act of charity. You don't say. In exchange for my floor, I shall be requiring your services. The Royalists saw fit to erect a barricade across the road south when they occupied the village, and failed to remove it when they left. 
I expect it to be gone before you leave. As you wish. What? What a dick. We saved your fucking village. <laughs> Well, that took longer than expected. First time dismantling the barricade? It gets easier, don't worry. I won't. If we leave now, we'll arrive at the care when the shadows are at the deepest. Unless you'd rather wait. No more waiting. I'm gonna guess that that was a sort of way to inject the beat into the story. Because they wanted to... Like, well, they, they needed some time to pass before our characters could go and get to where they need to go. So you need to take a day. You need to take a day and stop. But, like, Clive wants to move. Go, 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 go. So they had to put something in the way in order to... Um, put something in the way in order to just have them take an extra day. Because it was nighttime then, it's nighttime now. Otherwise, what's the harm in just having them push forward and having them exit the town now. It's a little awkward, but I guess it works. The road here cuts through Lorbert's Pass to Care Northern. You're not thinking of heading that way, are you? If the Royalists were looking to take the care that had posted centuries to prevent any unwelcome surprises, at least I would have. Well, you should know. So here we are, we're setting off. We have got to get to some place I can't remember the name of, but it is where they're expecting to find this dominant in a fire. Now something I, would, I had mentioned a minute ago was that it seems as though, well, it, it is kind of, I don't know, I'm a little, little torn over the idea of characters going and filling in parts of the story speculation for you. But I guess in some instances it is kind of required. So Sid made the observation that that um, this dominant that they're searching for hasn't gone and just blasted his way because uh, blasted his way out of captivity. Because who is going to be able to hold somebody with that kind of power? Obviously, we saw like just big power of the dominant of fire could burn shit up. So what was to stop him from just busting his way out of whatever confinement they put him in? Well, what there's the a reason. Is thinking? Why take a stronghold they've no chance of holding? When they've no intention of holding it. The king is up to something. The king? Well, you don't think they're acting on a whim, do you? This is one of his majesty's cunning stunts. And he sent his best to execute it. So we hear that the this dominant, who's probably Joshua, has a companion. Then we saw a cutscene with them two. And they went and they separated the two of them for the sake of, probably, well, Sid has suspects, for the sake of controlling the dominant. Because the dominant has enough power to just sort of bust his way out, burn everyone up, escape, you know? Perhaps he'd be less willing to do it if they were holding his companion hostage. That's a reasonable assumption to make. Though we're going to have to get further into the story, I guess, to know for sure. But we're on our way to the castle in order to try to find whoever it is we're after. <laughs> now, like I said before, Clive is under the belief that this is a freak that he's after the dominant that killed his brother what was it 13 years or so earlier 12 years earlier i don't believe that to be the case i believe he is a freight and joshua isn't actually dead just because he looked like he died these i don't know it um transforming into these things does seem to take something out of the person the transforming into these summon creatures does seem to take something out of the user. When we ran into Jill after she had had her fight as Shiva, she was beaten up and exhausted. And when Sid um, demonstrated his power, you could see that he was in like a little bit of pain afterwards. So using this power does seem to have an effect on people. 
Hard nut to crack, even when it isn't crawling with royalists. I don't care who else is in there. But the Phoenix did show, like, a degree of resilience. The Phoenix took a beating and then just suddenly, like, resuscitated. Same thing with a free. And you could also say probably the same thing kind of happened with, um... The same thing kind of happened with maybe Shiva and Titan. We didn't see who won that fight. But I would suspect that even if... Um, that both of those characters are still alive. I mean, Jill is obviously still alive, and that big bastard, he is definitely going to be a character we see later on in the game. So he's still alive. So it's even if, like, the... What do they call them? Icons. Even if the icons are defeated, probably the person who turned into them survives. Just they're work more worse for wear. I don't know. We'll have to play and find out. Much as I enjoy battering down the front door, I hazard this endeavor will require a bit more tact. There's an old sluice that empties under the bridge. It should see us through to the lower levels of the care. Sid. We both know why I'm here. But what is it that you want? Why would you risk your life for a handful of outcasts? If anyone ever learned what you've been doing with their property... They'd have my head in a box. But this isn't just about dominance and bearers, it's about all of us. What I want is to build a place where it doesn't matter what you are, but who you are. Ready for a place like that. So, until it is, I use the power I've been given to show people there is hope. This Benedicta. The best and worst decision I ever made. Don't underestimate her, Clive. A fight with her icon is not one you're likely to walk away from. Garuda. Warden of the Wind. Hey. Hmm? 